Thanks everyone uh, for your patience. Uh, I'm happy to announce uh, or to introduce Alexei. Good talk. Thank you. I changed the title of the talk slightly because I want to focus on one of the applications of, uh, of the mixing example that Anna presented in the previous story. So it's um, going to be on the distribution of the model. And um, <clears throat> uh, let me let me start with the, with the equations, right? Uh, so we want to consider the Maria Stokes equation, Andrew with Q plus U dot R U minus the pressure gradient plus mu of R U. And then in the bottom three, and then we'll also uh, sort of put it in Maria Stokes. I will also <clears throat> mention the advertising fusion equation because the results are very similar. Okay, so uh, here theta is a plastic scalar and it's uh, advertised by a given uh, velocity vector field, the body three vector field U. In this case, you even so what kind of uh, problem we are going to uh, look at? <clears throat> we want to take the <clears throat> energy dissipation rate of the energy source here would be uh, new times the auto norm of the gradient U squared take some kind of time average so we want to take this parameter right and then uh ask the following equation so what happens in the limit of uh position viscosity so we want to ask the for the equation whether the U suit As you approach zero, is and for the other uh, the equation, we will just replace you with And um, of course, uh, this is a very bad way to, way to write it down. So that's what I'm going to call the expression normal. Okay. Why is uh, that way? Because the left hand side is, is not a dimensional, but let's say if we fix. Initial data, so u of zero is fixed, and we want to consider uh, final time interval. So uh, we basically let's take the integral from zero to one of the autonomous w squared multiplied by u, right? Then such formulation makes, makes sense. So you want to ask whether the new suit as u goes to zero is consistent. And let me uh, start with known results. How long can I go my way? All the way, all the way. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, for the advection diffusion, the question that I uh, in this, so it's a uh, uh, recent result by Theotari, Argal, and uh, Cindy. Um, I think it appears in 2020 in the archive, I think. So, uh, they proved the equation anomaly for, for the abduction theory equation. 
And uh, just eight months ago, uh, uh, Camila Alevis and Alev. Showed the displacement anomaly for the force radius of the propaganda source. This is a force, that's on the side of the force, and uh, I'll explain how, how rough the force is. But before, before I, I do that, let me, let me just uh, draw, draw a picture. So, in both of these examples, so what happened? The limiting solution of the let's say Euler. So to separate many stocks and Euler, I'm going to add new here. Okay, so you knew this amount of the solution of the many stocks and where to and just you with the solution of Euler. So that's a limiting solution. In case we look at the energy of the limiting solution is one or almost one, but there is a force, but the work done by the force can be as small as you like. And uh, then the solution becomes zero at time at time one. So that's how the limiting solution looks. And um, then maybe stock solutions are going to be red. Well, this is okay, maybe the energy. So when this quantity is very, very small, it looks very similar to the oil solution where I can feel the time where the oil solution is going up. And then I'm not trying to work in the about the energy stock solution. Displayed lots of energy. And at the end, if you look at the, the limit, as mu goes to zero for the red, once there is energy, that's going to be the red of the mu. The limit in energy, take now the limit. The energy of the stock solution looks like this. This other is constant, and then the time one of it. And that's what we call the dispersion anomaly. So this is the limit. So I'm going to I'm going to define uh limits. That's what I'm going to call capital E. Okay, that's the uh, limit of the energy of the stock. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I, as I said already in this result, I have found that we did consider a rock, right? And the limit of energy is our quantity. Mm -hmm. So now let me make the address. Uh, force, the roughness of the force. Um, so in the, in the construction, um, oh, before, maybe before I first, uh, let me uh, just um, say a few words uh, of um, why these two constructions are related. So, the one by the ladies in blue was also based on, um, on an example of a force that's missing. So, that's uh, what Anna was presenting in the previous. Power is not better by Alberti. Rifa and Anna. Um, so it appears it doesn't succeed with an ordinary rate. Right, 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 right. But I mean, yes, so far in the archive. Okay. Let's make it And uh, uh, 
It's actually based on the on the on the second example, which is uh, which is which is which is which is uh, right? So let me maybe you know say, say a few words. Uh, about it. So uh, in this paper, we prove that there exists an example. Uh, there is a solution of uh, transfer generation of random results of data. But we put up data zero. So there is a vector field. You can solve the transfer, but when it's both of them are smooth. Um, two dimensional torus of moves from the interval from zero to one. Okay. And on um, top of that, uh, what happens? The solution of the transfer equation weekly equals zero as a time molecule. Um, Right, so have perfect, perfect mix. And uh, and you can be basically uh, as uh, the flow of the interest, the one of the of course, uh, but it can have a uniform bound on on the C alpha. Thank you. So that's that's going to be the uh, uh, black box for the construction that I will present today. Okay. And then what uh, Camilo and Elena uh, notice that you, if you consider two plus uh, one half dimensional, so we are going to take for now I will make a correction. So this U is going to become B. Okay, so that's the velocity vector field. That's a 2D velocity vector field. And if you V as the third two components of U, so that you know, you use one from the two, and say that as uh, the sort of component of, uh, of U, then it's going to be solution of Euler. Well, it would be a solution of Euler if V were solution of Euler. Right, uh, but since the active scalar theta is much much larger, of course, than the velocity, the velocity v is in the alpha the scalar, and it's it's it's, it's up two, right? So if you <clears throat> uh, now define the force to be basically whatever the magnetic stock is going to give you, right, from these two first components. So the force, the force is not going to be is not going to be too bad, right? What's going to happen is that the force now uh, actually gorgeous in L and E uh itself as well, where alpha can be as close to one to the and uh From, from the typical point of view, this is uh, acceptable setup. I would be, I would be happy with any convergent in L1, L2, L1 time of in space, because in this case, the work done by the force on high modes is small. Right? So the work done by the force is small, so we will talk about it in a second moment. And to maybe make it even more convincing, let me uh, mention so now to extract the reason. <coughs> the uh, result by uh, Chagadori and uh, and Hoyer. It goes back to 2002. And um, let me first explain what is the setup in this case. Uh, so, what they consider that it's a look at a long time, which is relevant. So, now 
average of the long time average of the linear as capital of the equals to infinity, one by capital of the equal of the capital of the capital of the capital so there is a force in the airplane, but I that the force is some number capital F, so the amplitude times function P, that's profile, which is fixed amount two. But if you would you like to make a connection with the result by the relative group, right, you can also think about P as. The force is dependent on this assumed convergence in the spectral efficiency. And now uh, let's denote by epsilon the energy uh, dissipation. So it's going to be the time average of U times L2 norm of the gradient U or the U. And of course, once you start talking about long time uh, averages, you, you you do need to you do need to make epsilon a dimensional. Otherwise, even if a question you will have this equation among the direction. But what happens here? Averaging over the global disaster, which become bigger and bigger as you go to zero, right? So the appropriate distilling is uh, so this chart is all so would be to take epsilon multiplied by the length scales so that kind of thing think about it with uh, the side of the force and we divide by characteristic velocity about c right where in this case the characteristic velocity is the, the long time average of uh over multi square and the serum Says following um, that uh, beta enjoys enjoys the following bound it is uh, it's an upper bound, so it's less than ripple to the constant C1 plus for the lambda uh, you will have the Reynolds number and power minus one to so the Reynolds number is a uh, Capital U times L divided by. Mm -hmm. So this is basically uh, what what is expected to such a you know such a behavior for the uh, energy dissipation rate is expected in turbulent theory. So mm -hmm. ideally, of course, you would, would want to obtain a, a lower bound, but at this point, if you if you are thinking about <laughs> taking long time averages in, you know, over, over the global chapter for the south of reach. Uh, but the point that I want to make is uh, the upper bound for does not feel forces even in the field. Right? So as long as the work done by the force is small on high modes, it's a special anomaly that is. That is uh, that we do this. And maybe <laughs> just for fun, let me mention what happens if you if go to a number of forces, which by the way, physicists sometimes sometimes do, they call them fractal forces. Makes sense to go up to H minus one, physicists manage to go even further. <coughs> right. So this was um uh, it was uh, without this Charlie uh, and it was drop. I think we did it in two thousand six. Okay, so same 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 setup as before, uh, but the profile P is in H minus alpha, or it is like gorgeous. It, it is gorgeous. In H minus alpha. Okay. And um, alpha. 
Um, so the bound, the bound, the bounds work. Well, in this case, of course, the work by the force on high amounts can be non trivial, and the bound indeed becomes the bounds force. So beta is less than r, which is so. <laughs> So uh, in the turbulent theorem, it's the end of number to the bar alpha over two minus minus alpha. So it becomes worse when alpha is uh, one alpha is And the C1 plus C2, Reynolds number minus one, about two, two minus. <clears throat> okay, so now maybe I'm, I'm going to finish this reduction and uh, present the uh, various, various constructions that kind of. We obtain this you know, two and a half dimensional uh, solutions of the Megastox equation. So, first, let me start with the, the setup. So, I uh, that the force is going to converge in uh, C alpha. Alpha can be as close to one as you like. Um, other than that, uh, everything is going to be smooth. So, F and U are going to be smooth. The U is solution of the stops. That's going to be smooth. Up to, up to the time. Um, so, smooth everywhere except time one. Right. So, I'm going to. Um, so smooth everywhere up to x except the time one. And uh, let me write down the objects that are going to be interesting. So I said, you said capital E. It's going to denote the limiting energy. So it's going to be limit for some subsequent some sequence of positive with you know, the part of the different subsequences obtained in you know, different types of behaviors. So limit as a uh, new goes to zero of uh, of the energy of the um, solution of the stops. Mm -hmm. Capital D is going to be the function that uh, describes the dissipation anomaly. So, uh, so this is the number that is going to be about capital D of one. So, what is capital D? It's going to be the limit as mu j goes to zero of uh, mu times the integral from zero to t. Of the autonorm of gradient two squared. Again. And also, we're going to look at the energy of the, the limiting solution. We're going to write it in the setup. Of course, you know that in all the constructions, solution is going to be stocks. So, converge to. The solution of, of the Euler equation can be so in <clears throat> so, uh, infinity zero zero two uh L two L zero two. So you'll be also interested in the energy of the limiting sequence. And uh the questions that I'm going to ask
I'll go with the best follow up, but first, well, the only thing that is the special anomaly in Japan, so maybe let me be very, very precise about what the special anomaly is. So, the special anomaly is the uh, function theta of D, it's not identically for the physical equation. So, now what is anomalous so very complicated? Therefore, separating these two phenomena. So I'm going to say that the <clears throat> a limiting solution exhibits the anomalous separation if it does not uh, satisfy the uh, energy quote. So without a force, that doesn't mean that the energy is not enough. Okay. So the limiting solution in this case does not satisfy the energy quote. And from the from the energy balance, so as I said, of course, all these things in the stocks are in things that are moving for the by the energy mode. The energy at time t is equal to the energy at r of the case of zero or minus the total. Separation of the interval from zero to T. And uh, we also have the work done by the force for the integral from zero to T. Yeah. <coughs> so from the Energy quality immediately um, follows that the dissipation uh, moment, of course, implies implies moment. Right but in the in the limit, as we take a limit, right? Uh, norms can only drop, right? So you have this convergence, so norms can drop. So if you have this special anomaly. Then automatically the limiting solution will not satisfy the energy balance. Okay. So this is going to be the, the, the setup. And by the way, so regarding the work done by the force, so it's 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 going to be uh, the work done by the force is going to be zero on, on the interval uh, from from zero to one. So it's not it's not going to affect the energy balance. So ignore it. Okay, so here are the questions that I'd like to get. First of all, uh, <clears throat> is it possible to have a total dissipation anomaly? It means total means that the limiting energy at time one is actually right? um, or which is the same to say as the function d of, of, of one to zero. So I forgot to, forgot to mention the initial data will have um, will have energy which is just one for simplicity. Okay. So you do you you. The second question, so this was uh, one of the questions which was asked in the paper by the lady from Brew. Is it possible to have a special anomaly uh, with a continuous, you know, two limiting solution of the oil? Is it possible to have the energy of the limiting solution continuous? Now I'm also going to ask a similar question. It's possible to have the <coughs> limiting energy and the and then if there is time, I'll also talk about and the selection principle for the oil equation. So it's possible to have 
in here there are many limiting functions right of the order. Okay. And uh, okay, so let me tell you what the answers are. So uh, for the for the first two answers are yes. No, for the first one is yes, for the second one is no, and then it's yes and yes. So I'm not so it's not it's not more general. Uh, the limiting solution has to be discontinuous for any kind of constructions that have a self similar bound on the energy spectrum. In fact, of time, the energy will have an improvement that yet. But uh, okay. then the answer is no. The limiting solution has to be discontinuous. But while the limiting solution has to be discontinuous, the limit of the energy can still be continuous. Okay. Um, so maybe let me um, draw some picture. Okay, so the first the first construction is really uh, based on the one in the paper by Galileo. And then we have time I'll talk about some some other constructions as well. We can go. So the theorem says the following. So there exists uh, a sequence of solutions of the Magistock equations, right? <coughs> Such that you want different subsequences for a different uh, uh, have different properties. And to describe it, I'm just going to draw draw some pictures. Okay, so the first one is that we're going to be. Uh, the energy of the limiting function, so that's already something as I mentioned. So it's again, it's, it's S in the paper by the Lewis and Blue, it's one, and then we have a drop of the time of time one. But I'm going to also investigate what happened after, after the, the drop. After the limiting function becomes zero. Okay, so the first, uh, the first <clears throat> theorem. So basically, you can choose any any number between zero and one. So how how for e. So for any number e between zero and one, uh, there exists there exists a subsequence of the solution of the stock equation where the limiting where the limit of the energy has that the drop of one minus e. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what happens, what happens after one still at the end still still becomes still becomes zero. So solution from the stokes actually in this case converge strongly in the limiting solution of all your everywhere except the span equals to one. So if you want to perceive how the energy this of solutions look it's going to be fine. right so a portion of the special anomaly happened uh, right before time equals to one and the rest happens right after and you are free to choose that portion of any way you want Okay, so um, which number of 
and use. So maybe uh, let me um, not say much more about this. Let me uh, just draw a few more pictures. So um, maybe I do have time to talk about uh, what happens to the uh, what happens in the treatment system. So maybe let me try to draw picture. So all these examples are almost so similar. So basically, your solutions are sitting in some sort of like around some diagonal curve and get this right. So what happens to the uh, frequency of all your solutions? Up. And for maybe stock solutions, so this is going to be the frequency of all the capital capital one where the solution is sitting. And for maybe stocks, of course, it's going to follow Euler sometime and then. Uh, so in this in this construction, uh, the solution B becomes becomes zero after one. So the solution of the stock is sitting on the same frequency after that. And uh, so this is something what I like to call the common orders dissipation wave number. And what happens in all this construction? So why there are different types of behaviors? Uh, then the viscosity slightly changes with the common wave number. So it's supposed to scale like how about uh, d to the power minus <clears throat> minus two, right? So what happens if you make slight adjustments you multiply by log how about d to some some power s or the of the power of c different types of behaviors. So, well, in particular, so in this, uh, in this, this construction of n is zero, but it changes depends on e. So, what happens if you remove the log? So, you make the viscosity even, even smaller. And then, uh, okay, so the blue of the is the emitting solution. What you are going to see at that point that the limiting energy of the Nagas stocks is going to be actually continuous. Okay, so you see something like this. So that's that's the picture. So again, the red one is E. <clears throat> so uh, in particular, uh, on the interval from one to two. We don't have we don't have a strong convergence. We have a drop, a drop in the norm. It's supposed to go to zero. So what happens is that uh, there's kind of a different mechanism to obtain uh, dissipation anomaly. Uh, sorry, uh, anomaly dissipation for the emitting from right for the solution time. That can be a soft sitting on high frequency, and that frequency as, as the viscosity goes to zero, right? It just goes to high, high frequency, but it doesn't dissipate. So actually, you can you can even find subsequence of the quantities where the the limit in, so the limit of the energy is just one plus one. Okay, so E is identity one, but we do have um, anomalous dissipation for the limit. So this is one of the examples where you do have uh, anomalous, anomalous dissipation that is not so the general anomalous dissipation but not uh, okay and uh, so in particular in particular for this example answers answers the sort question but not in a very satisfactory way because you don't have a strong conversion. Uh, so I uh, have a different construction where you, you do have strong words, but still uh, E of T is continuous. And uh, still is. So maybe I'm still have time for one more picture. Uh, 
had to be very fast. So this second construction here I was trying to figure out what it is. Uh, in addition to the forward energy state, for the backward energy state. Right, so the frequency for the limited function that is the frequency of lambda. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so in this case, you can have, well, at least two limited, limited functions. So one here within the four, and another one for this boiler, blue, where all the energy which was lost at time one comes back. So there are at least two. I mean, that's a still follows from the construction that explicit that you know this follows from the uh, from those mixing constructions. Um, and the question is, is there something else? Is there something else? And uh, the answer is yes, indeed. Okay, so uh, for the next talks, uh, what one can show uh, is that. <clears throat> There are so the limited energy is capital E. So one can, of course, there are two uh, obvious sub sequences where the energy stock solutions follow uh, the first order solution or the second order solution, right? But also, one can interpolate, one can interpolate between these two. In this general, um, one can show that there are. Uh, I can only at this point show there are countably many, countably many different possibilities for the for the images. Okay, and each of those subsequent, of course, is going to in the limit give you. Uh, A new limiting solution to the Euler equation. So there are, in addition to those two, to the obvious two, there are, well, at least count of the many uh, limiting solutions. And probably I'll stop. Oh, it's uh, it's actually basically uh, so for the so as, as I said, all this example uh, two and a half channel wave basically you start with a two and a half dimensional flow, right? Then you start with the solution of the transfer. <clears throat> all right, then. You can see that a two and a half dimensional flow, the U, D1, D2 data. And then you ask the question what happens if you add this cosmos, right? It's not going to happen. Uh, and uh, for the second construction, basically, you take the example that Anna was describing, and then you just reverse time. That's, that's what you do. Uh, so, you, so, so you have. <clears throat> Just from Anna's construction, it follows that there is a solution of transport equation with, which exceeds you know, backwards energy, forward energy cascade, and backwards energy cascade. So it loses all the energy at time one, and all that energy comes, comes back. It comes back. Right? So you have 